Welcome back. We are working in Unity now. We have animated our penguin character that we've been creating in this series of videos. So if you've missed out on that, make sure to check out the previous few videos. We're going to set up animations for this and keyboard input for it so that we can make this thing kind of um, move around in the scene. So we have our penguin. We have all of our animations working. We tested those out in the previous one. But now we need to add an animator so that this can actually move in the scene. So I'm going to right click down here, probably not in meshes, uh, probably I think I created this folder here animation uh, earlier. I'm going to right click and I'm going to, let's see, create an animator controller. And I'll call this penguin animator. And if I double click on this, it's going to open this animator window, which is just turns out to be a different tab. And it has a number of states, um, any state entry and exit. Well, none of these actually are going to cause any amount of animation to happen. So we're going to need to create a new state. And I'm actually going to want to create a, oh, it took a while, I right clicked and then like a couple seconds later that showed up. Anyway, um, I want to create an empty state, I believe. Actually, nope, we want to do from new blend tree. And this blend tree, what it does is it's going to allow us to combine the different animations in a smooth way. So if you create this blend tree and then click on it, we'll rename it to movement blend tree. And then we're going to come in here we don't I'm not going to do any transitions or anything I'm just going to double click on it and then expand this blend tree so you can see that we're a layer deeper in here so we need to have in this blend tree if you click it we need to have a 2D freeform directional and then it's going to use two different parameters here to control it. So what we want to do is we want to control it with a basically a, a horizontal movement and a vertical movement. And to do that, we need parameters. So parameters are either uh, float values or Boolean values. Basically, we want it so that every time we press the the forward key on the keyboard, then it it makes one of these things be positive one. Um, and then the left and right, we want one for, for turning as well. So I'm going to call this um, vertical. And then I'm going to call create a new float by clicking this plus button and call it horizontal. And so our parameters are then going to be horizontal and vertical here. And then what we're going to do is just blend them. So if we do this motion, add motion field with this plus, what we need to do is add a, basically one of these different things. So I'm gonna add idle first. Okay, so idle is when our position is in the X and Y is zero. So horizontal and vertical is zero. So he's just sitting still. We're gonna add another one. For now we've got this uh, this view here. Another one for forward. Okay, and so that's gonna be when the position in the vertical axis is one. And then we want another one for turning left. And that's when the X position is negative one. Yep, that's right. And then the last one is going to be turning right. And it did not guess that one correctly, so we're going to change this one to positive one and zero. Okay, so I think if we press play here, yes, we're able to see what this looks like. So if we click and gr drag this red guy, this would happen if we were pressing full forward. If we're pe pressing fully to the right, fully to the left, and somewhere in between, he's able to kind of turn like that. So that's the kind of thing we're, we're working with. He's, he's not able to go backwards, so he's only able to turn idle and go forward. 
So now we've got this blend tree set up, which is pretty cool. We need to do something that actually sets these values though, because this is not going to happen automatically for us because Unity doesn't know that we want to hook up the keyboard inputs to it. We might want to control this penguin with code. We might want to set something that says move using the um, like AI logic or the navigation stuff. So we're going to come back into our assets here and we're going to, well, first of all, let's let's hook this up so that we don't forget. When we're in this penguin, we can set up our penguin animator. And in fact, if we play this scene, it should just do the idle animation because it's going to be on those defaults. So yeah, you can see this, this penguin, he's just sitting there idle waiting for us to code up some input. So I'm going to go into my scripts folder and looks like I already made one. So I'm just going to delete this. All right, so we're going to right click and create a new C-sharp script. We're going to call it penguin input, put input, okay? And then we're going to attach it to this penguin. Reason being that when we want to control it, we need to grab this animator on it. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna double click on it, open Visual Studio. And then we want to, first of all, get the animator. So we're gonna create a new variable, private, private animator, animation, no, we want animator, I believe. Animator, animator. And then we need to get, um, say animator in the start uh, method animator equals get component animator okay and then we need to set those values once we've gotten this from the penguin in each frame we're going to say animator dot set float okay so this is going to set the floats that we set in that blend tree so send float values to the animator to affect transitions. And it's looking for either an int ID or a string name and a value. So the, the name that we're looking for for this one is horizontal. Remember that matches up with our blend tree here. Horizontal and vertical are the two we wanna set. So we're going to set the float horizontal and the value that we want to put in is actually going to come from input dot get axis or horizontal. Okay. And I'm going to show you that it's the same thing for the vertical. And then I'm going to show you where this is actually coming from. Animator dot set float vertical input dot get axis vertical. And these will be values from negative one up to one. So I'm going to save this and then show you where those get axis come from. Oops. So that comes from our project settings. So if you don't have this window showing, you can go to edit project settings. And that should make it pop up somewhere. But if you don't see it, then mine is in a tab over here. And then input is where we're looking at. And so all these axes, there's 18 of them by default. You don't need to do anything special. Horizontal is already set up for the negative button and the positive button to be left and right or the A and E keys. So you can use W, A, S, and D to control your uh, penguin, or you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard. So vertical and horizontal. So these names are the ones that we're pulling in. So now if we come back into this game, we should be able to play. And if I press forward on my, I'm actually pressing the W key, but I can turn left and right. And he's kind of being controllable by this. If for some reason your penguin 
does not appear to be moving forward, then make sure that in your animator you have this apply root motion checked. If you don't have it and you hit play, then it's not going to work correctly. He's not going to move at all. But if you if you apply it, then it will move the character. If you uncheck it and, and turn right, left, forward, it's not going to move it at all. So that's that's an important thing for making this work. We've come quite a long way in the last few videos. We started with a static mesh, and then we rigged it, and we weight painted it, and then we animated it, and we brought it into Unity with a blend tree. The next thing I'm going to do after this is bring it into a Unity ML Agents project. And if you've never seen Unity ML Agents, it's a really cool tool set that allows us to use reinforcement learning. So that's artificial intelligence. Um, and teach these things how to uh, seek something. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to make them uh, try to find fish in their environment. And so if you've only done the Blender and Unity side of things and you're curious to learn more about artificial intelligence, definitely continue this series, and I'll see you in the next video.